<laughs> that was the weakest fucking clap. <laughs> that was just like the that was like I was doing it underwater. That was like, like no, don't don't change it. No, no, Let no, them no, hear no. my failure. Yeah. I want them to <laughs> Did you just miss them or something? I don't know what happened. <laughs> it was like I was wearing dishwashing gloves. The or something. one thing you do like, quiet is clapping, apparently. <laughs> loud in every other facet. That's not even close to loud. That's that that's not even topping out. Just what the fuck is that? I don't know. That's so funny. <laughs> that is really weird. I don't have small hands. What's your clap? I need to clap. What's your clap? I, Jake's, no, Jake's going to clap. No, see, that's a normal that's clap. You got that's a normal clap. clap. I got to clap, clap like, got like, a, I gotta clap like an 11 year old girl. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. I'm Simon King. What's wrong with my clap? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Simon King, and this is what's wrong. Um, we are uh, back in the studio, and you'd know this if you were watching it. You should be watching it on YouTube. If you're listening to it on your audio device, hey, that's fine. Use your eyes for something else. I don't fucking care. No. What do I give a shit? <laughs> what, are you going to gonna run out? Why don't you use them for this, too, huh? What, are you going to run out? You got eyes, right? <laughs> I got to get the oil changed on my eyes. That'd be, that'd be shitty. That's how you know your friend's a robot. Um, yeah, so this is uh, we are back in the studio. Um, last the last episode was uh, by myself, and um, even I hated it. So, <laughs> I was sober too. It was the middle of the day. I was drinking water. What the fuck's oh, wrong? Oh wow! Would that be the would that be the first sober since the relaunch? Yeah, that'd be yeah. the first. No, That's no, because I did one without drinking with Brett Martin. But no, no, I no, drank. No, drank before. Yeah, yeah. 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 That was a double episode. So yeah, <laughs> that was a double episode. Anyway, so I'm Simon King. And this one's wrong. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for uh, tuning into the podcast, for watching the podcast, for seeing my band aid, um, for checking out my uh, children's entertainer shirt. <laughs> I look like I got my clothes out of a vending machine. I thought I would match you because I'm wearing. You're wearing more traditional. Simon you're wearing King the dark. traditional Simon King yeah. standard outfit, which I actually we no, pointed out I've only worn once on this podcast. Yeah, yeah. The traditional time, yeah. Simon King comedy outfit, which now anyone who listens to the podcast knows because of insane. <laughs> <laughs> so every time someone sees that shirt now, nobody nobody mocks it anymore. They're like, he's having a bad week. What's like, the backstory <laughs> behind your that outfit? Why it's just it? a simple matter of I hate the way I look. So I just like <laughs> if I find something I don't hate mm-hmm. a thousand percent, then I fucking uh, you know. And you know what I don't hate a thousand percent? Jake Spencer, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my God. Hey, oh that hey, was actually hey, really nice. Hey, I really appreciate that. I like how I said I don't hate you a thousand percent. That's a lot of leeway. It could be nine hundred and ninety nine percent, Jake. You don't know. You are a hundred percent allowed. No, no, I, I... <laughs> Oh my God! Thank you very much for joining us. Oh, this is a blast. I, I am happy to be here. Welcome, uh, things, welcome, yeah. uh, welcome I've aboard. Little, this is sorry. I don't mean to no, cut no. you off. You in your do whatever the fuck you want. This is an issue I have. I've been told numerous times <laughs> I drink like a monster. I have literally powered through this wheat beer and like. Oh, I thought you mean you drink like a monster. Like <laughs> <laughs> I drink like Cookie Monster. Nothing actually gets in my mouth. It just flies over to the side. Just like between drinking, you eat children. What? <laughs> I, I eat like a monster. <laughs> I drink like a monster. <laughs> <laughs> My name is <laughs> and I am an alcoholic. <laughs> monsters Anonymous. You would know though, because they wouldn't would be think. anonymous. Yeah. yeah. Because everyone would be like, I, you can tell you're a fucking monster. You have a horn. <laughs> That's Baba Yaga. I know your the story. Baba Yaga. <laughs> Yeah. Baba Yaga, there must be a beer called the Baba Yaga. They're really that's such a craft beer name. Baba, Baba Yaga, Yaga. Baba Yaga. You know, flies yeah. over in the children. Do- I forget what yeah. Baba Yaga does. There's, Baba Yaga. There's like this. <laughs> wow. Was it a burp? Baba Yaga. No, that was, <laughs> if it was a burp, he did it again. So. <laughs> the Baba Yaga. <laughs> yeah, every so often I'll dip down into the deep scary voice, right? <laughs> wow. What if I did the whole pocket? I'm saying this what's wrong. Oh my <laughs> like, God. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Maybe like, so my Twitter is. Um, <laughs> tell, me, tell me more about your problems <laughs> <laughs> it's tough talking to girls um, it's, a distre- it's a distressing voice it is. I mean, yeah. i've never actually heard it through headphones before it sounds it's more demonic oh, that's your that's headphones. your um dr claw voice i'll get you next time get get next time gadget yeah, <laughs> yeah there it is. Okay. Uh, i never even thought about that and you know who else i don't hate a thousand percent um because I, I he managed to screw up last episode by not even being in it oh, right. uh, <laughs> My now vindicated producer, Mikey Greenwood. Mikey Greenwood, there's his thumb oh. and his hand. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we are back. I hope you're um, enjoying it. That's it. Good night. And uh, yeah, <laughs> three minute podcast. Glad we did this. Yeah, we're fucking done. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you have any scary voices that you do? Do you, do you find that you like would pitch your voice differently if you were in a situation that required a different pitching of a voice? Well, I actually my natural voice is lower than how I speak. I learned this when I was doing when I was in theater. Okay. Because uh, I did a lot of voice training when I was uh, getting a BFA. And um <laughs> I just spit on myself. He's got a degree and I'm salivating on myself and I'm mocking him. <laughs> oh please. 
I don't know why the fuck I. Anyway, no, you're right. Me, my guest this week is nerd. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> it's a theater degree. Yeah, theater fair guy. enough. Bachelor, yeah. fuck all. Yeah. And um, so you got a, you, you were getting your degree, and you okay, found out. And I just did a lot of voice work, and I would talk, and then this the one teacher, the one main voice teacher, does very good at spotting registers. Well, yeah. She does it for a living. You would hope she could. Yeah. And she would be go lower, and I always feel more relaxed when I went lower, but I yeah. still go higher. I don't know. It's sort of like um, I'm just doing other comedians' bits, but when you make yourself mousy when you come into a room, I think I do that with my voice. Yeah, <laughs> I try and be as unfrightening as possible. So it's like I was like talking like, which is more normal. I'm like this, I'm over mm-hmm. here, so I'm always yeah. My register is, is much lower. Yeah, yeah, I find that I find that like I, I guess I, my voice is. I never know whether my. Sometimes I think my voice is higher than it is, and sometimes I think it's lower. I can't for someone who does voices. I don't really know what my voice sounds yeah, like. Yeah, like I can't figure out where I am because at any mm-hmm. one time it could be something different. Because it's very easy for me to lower my voice like this. Or it's yeah. very easy for me to raise my voice. You know, yeah, like yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. It's like very. For, so to me, it's like it, it's never. I think that's why it's hard to do impressions of impressionists because yeah. they don't. They're not. You have you know, different yeah. tones for de- depending on the topic. I think I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you got a bit more lower. I've got a real audiobook stuff. voice. Mm. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> it was a quiet town. <laughs> <laughs> that would be just a great podcast. I just I just read books. I think those are called audio books. Those are audio books. Kyle did that. Though. I think Kyle Canaan did public domain with Kyle Canaan. He really? just found a book oh, that he was legally awesome. allowed to read. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> hey, you, you, this is Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. That guy's got an amazing voice. Oh, I love it. Hey, yeah, you, you, you guys are doing okay. You're all right. I got, I got a van. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he the voice of Comedy Central? Like, yeah, he was. He was a long time. And oh. he's, on the, he's got the Boogie Monster podcast with Dave Stone. That's a great podcast. Wow. But listen to this one. And then, <laughs> yeah. then he goes into that <laughs> one. Nice. But that's a funny podcast, too. This is, it originally started out as uh, like supposed to be supernatural stuff. Okay. And it turned into like restaurants, and, and food, <laughs> which is great. There you go. I mean, I, that's, you know, once I, I find that, like, what your podcast intent, I'm trying, like, trying to give myself an out here. <laughs> what your podcast was supposed to be and what it becomes are, that's fine. Because mine used to be all serious. <laughs> <laughs> We'll get serious every now and then. Yeah, yeah. sometimes we, we get serious, weirdly serious with Harris. Yeah, and I think certain types of whiskey makes you super eloquent oh, and insightful. Well, I think if it, I, I definitely the more booze I drink on stage, the the more I dig in to like uh-huh. being a you know just like. <laughs> 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 uh, one of my contacts has decided I'm going to sleep, so just be aware uh-huh. that that's why I'm touching my eye. It's not because I'm just. You like, have contacts? Yeah, I wear contacts. I'm blind as a fucking bat. <laughs> What? I, I literally couldn't see you with your now freshly shaved face. <laughs> yes. Although it's not shaved. Mikey has Mikey had so much beard before that people would throw change at him. <laughs> and now people ask him if he has change. So he's <laughs> moving fucking up in the world. Hmm. So you got a BFA. What, if, what have you done with it? What, have you done literally with it? nothing. Nothing cool. Nothing cool. at You're all. You're a comic now. Well, I'm a comic. Well, I mean, I graduated um, from university. I kind of faked my way into university. It was almost nice. like athletic scholarship, but nice. it was like I did not have the grades for university. Um, and you I just thought, came in with a, with a handkerchief. <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> the future. And they're like, this guy's a natural. <laughs> Pretty much. That actually, ironically, that it wasn't me, but that did happen in the theater just program. So Not like a, a handkerchief. <laughs> cool. But someone auditioned for the program, didn't get in. Yeah. Um, then she showed up on day one and said, I know I didn't get in, but you want me here. <laughs> and they, just, they were just like, holy shit. And they took her in. And she's actually quite successful now. So, <laughs> Well, yeah, with an ego like that. Yeah, that's just like... I mean, you can't just walk into a fucking Walmart and be like, I know I didn't get the job, but I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> like, holy shit. I feel like you could. Speaking of being able to read registers, that's what I do. I'm over there. <laughs> it's like, just start just kick a guy out of the wind, just start nice. stacking rollerblades. What the Boom. fuck? <laughs> <laughs> or just be the one who, like, no, I'm breaking into Ivan's, but be the one who, like, watches the self-checkout thing. Yeah. I feel like you just start doing that, and then and they just start paying you at a certain point. Like, I think the yeah. person who watches the the, uh, the uh, check out, and I haven't heard that bit, so if I'm standing on it, um, oh, but here's the here's the. I think the person that watches the checkout, they should only be people dressed like 1950s detectives on a stage. <laughs> that would be awesome. So she just be some guy with like an unlit cigarette, <laughs> just holding a black coffee, just like. <laughs> Where they have a magnifying glass too. Just that, there. they have a steering wheel in front of them oh. for some reason, like they're sitting in a car. <laughs> it's like. Did you pay for that bag? <laughs> Gotta be at least one person playing like Long Goodbye on a piano nearby. Like Quite a bit. Just, every time someone leaves, she picked up her bags and left. <laughs> I looked around the store and thought to myself, <laughs> You're wrecking it. <laughs> it's never an opportune time to have just an announcement pop in. You know what I mean? Like, they never have that in movies. No. They have like some scene in the movies like, <laughs> I told you I couldn't leave. Why you doing it? Why you doing it? <laughs> They paused to listen oh, to it. Yeah. 
I thought we were speaking of things and movies to take you out. I was re- I re I watched um King of Staten Island, the um the Pete mm. Davidson movie. I actually really enjoyed mm-hmm. the movie. I like yeah, the movie yeah. a lot. But it has one of my least favorite things in a movie where he's in a restaurant, he's working in the restaurant. Yeah. His uh the guy that's dating his mom is there and uh they start talking and he sits with him at the table in the restaurant While he's working, working at and no one says shit. Oh, yeah. Like you could just do that in a restaurant. <laughs> he's a bus that's I don't a, think he's a waiter. <laughs> he's a bus boy. Like just like in a sit down like we need to have a dramatic moment. And like like nothing else is happening in the restaurant at yeah. all apparently. <laughs> it's just him. They're just eating bread and it's just place. and Pete Davidson yeah. the tattooed bus boy. <laughs> yeah, just with his Which is a good haircut by the way if you get a tattooed bus boy. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, it's also yeah. a good craft beer, the tattoo. The tattoo, that's boy, Baba Yaga. Brought you by Baba Yaga. I, I do, and like I've had servers sit at my table before. Really? And, and sometimes it's welcome, and sometimes it's fucking not. And I'm no. like, why yeah. are you doing this? I don't even like when they crouch to take your Yeah, order. crouching's weird mm-hmm. too, because it always feels like they're in striking distance then. Yeah. Like they're letting <laughs> you get down to where your throat is yeah. in yeah. case you order the special. <laughs> but I always think it's like when they sit, because I've never been a server. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I mean, obviously, like I don't mind most of the time. But sometimes it seems seems to be done like we're buddies and you're gonna yeah. give me more money i'm like that's not how that works at all. <laughs> yeah because totally. anyone who's my buddy knows i don't have any fucking money <laughs> <laughs> i'm not even gonna pay for my meal like oh, you don't God. know how this is gonna work yeah. i'm, I'm running out the back door soon <laughs> yeah i'm gonna the best the best way you're gonna get a tip is to help me get out the window in the bathroom <laughs> <laughs> It is very much like it's a, I would say, like, if you're looking at waiters as a performance art, it's yeah. when you're taking a risk, and if the risk works, it's fantastic. Because mm. mm. I've seen waiters that do that with a table, like, clearly the table is like a bachelor art party, they're almost a little bit, they're a little bit loopy, they don't know what they want, and he's just like, okay, look, here's what we're going to do. And he sits down, yeah, yeah. clearly <laughs> performing the harried waiter, and they yeah, just yeah, made yeah, their yeah, night yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you fuck that up, it's not good. Yeah, like, no, yeah. if you do that, the wrong thing is like some yeah. guy's having some mafia meeting, and you oh, come, God. hey, guys! <laughs> It looks like you need a little more bread. What the fuck is this guy doing? Why does that guy have no finger? Oh, okay. What the fuck are you doing here? Huh? What the fuck are you here? He's like, yeah, but I, I thought you might like some balsamic vinegar. <laughs> Shitty waiter. Uh, this one who's in at the wrong time. That's a whole career. It's just that's all the parts you get in every movie. It's just the guy who wanders in at the wrong time as the <laughs> server. Hey! <laughs> it's like a French Revolution scene for oh, no God. reason. Just, a, <laughs> just by the guillotine. Did anyone want water? <laughs> How's everything tasting? I didn't tell you we charge for bread. I should have told you that out of the gates. <laughs> I said order of bread. That means you ordered the bread. I should have said yeah. that before. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, endless yeah. doesn't mean free. Yes. Endless means we'll keep bringing actually, it. That is actually true. Really? Oh, endless yeah. isn't free. It's just we'll keep. You yeah. Know, just, yeah. yeah. Bottomless doesn't mean that. Bottomless. Doesn't. Well, I've been to the spaghetti factory. They give you that free loaf of bread. Well, that's, I mean. Yeah. I've gone four. I've gone four. Really? Four. four. Yeah. Yeah. I'm amazed by stuff like that. Like, there's what was it? IHOP, I think. I don't know if it has it in Canada, but in the States, they have all you can eat pancakes. And I'm like, what, five? Like, yeah, pancakes are like. Yeah, you can't do yeah. a lot. Like, but there's got to be people that, like, break IHOP. Like, there's got to be people. Yeah. Oh, in yeah. the States, for sure. Oh, there's yeah. people that fucking are. Yeah, there's people on. Like, I think one out of every 10 people probably could break IHOP. In the yeah. States. Like, I mean, and, and, and there was a hackneyed <laughs> thing to say that there's um, the population of America is, has a tendency to be quite large, mm-hmm. but. No, no. And this is coming from someone who is quite large, but I will tell you this, is like, it really is phenomenal. If you spend any time in any major American city, you're just like, mm-hmm. it's a lot. Mm. And it's because they're the top of the world in sort of like, well, for a while, quality of life and yeah. access to things and mm-hmm. everything. And, and, and there's just un- unbridled capitalism and access. And yeah. there's no control over the food. And so everyone just eats whatever it's the fuck they want. Diseases yeah. of affluence. It's when and, you've got ooh, that like many that. resources. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that was, um, I remember hearing, oh, initially someone tried to tie it to why you shouldn't eat meat. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then they made them. This is a documentary site ages ago, but it was actually very poorly researched. But I forgot all the people. They would say people that eat meat, you know, they're rich and they eat meat. And that's why they're sick. But it's also because they're eating sugar. Yeah. And they're eating and they're smoking and they're drinking yeah. and doing all the things affluent people can do. Mm. Yeah. And, and the funny thing older. is too is meat is actually one of the cheapest things to eat. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. like a hamburger shouldn't be a dollar. Like there's no fucking way in the world a hamburger yes. should be a dollar. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't yeah. make any sense. <laughs> yeah. And especially like you look at these burgers and they're like you know five dollars and it's it's three quarters of a pound of meat and you're like what the fuck is going on mm-hmm. here? Yeah. And it's because it's like. Like it's, I think it's going to be interesting to see when, because we are going to get to vat grown meat or science, like lab grown meat. Yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It, I, I, yeah. Me too. Totally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's going to happen. I think regular meat will exist, but I think the first fast food restaurant that goes that way, mm-hmm. hey, it's going to be cheaper because it's yeah. going to be way easier to produce and mm-hmm. way cheaper to produce. Mm-hmm. And the first one that goes that way, and actually, because you can't taste the meat in a McDonald's hamburger anyway. No. You tell me a fucking cheeseburger, that little fucking circle of meat, you're like, yeah. oh, I know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I could tell if you're like the fucking, what's that guy, the fucking salt bay guy with the 
the fucking Bam. God, that Bam? no, the glasses guy with the fucking <laughs> put the salt. He got I have famous. No idea. He got famous for wearing gloves and a white T-shirt and throwing salt on a piece of meat. Like this is where we're at. This is what society is. Okay. Salt Bay. Look at what's up. his name? The guy that goes Bam. That no, cook? no, that's no. Emerald Lagazzi. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, Emerald yeah. Lagazzi. He's retired to a private island, just filled with, <laughs> filled with dancing cayenne peppers. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just every so often he gets a visit from uh, what's his face? Uh, what's that guy with the fucking hair? Um, diners, drive-ins, and fuck oh, me. Oh, Guy Fieri. Guy Fieri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Guy Fieri. I saw him. It sounds with... like a Muppet. <laughs> I saw him with it normal like hair, and it looked so weird. Like oh, normal yeah. hair and no glasses, and it was like, oh god, are you sick? I don't know what it was. Yeah, that'd be like just... seeing Mickey Mouse the mascot without his helmet. Yeah, it was, it's, yeah, it's like, like anytime yeah. you see like you know like a superhero when their hat is off, but they still have the black eyes. Ooh. It kind of looked like that. <laughs> all he has to do, all he yeah. has to do to go out in public and not be bothered is just not put on a shirt with flames on it. He just walks out, and everyone's like, kind of look like him, but there's no fucking way. He just gets into the Toyota Camry. Yeah, no, that's not yeah, him. Not There's him. no fucking way that's him. <laughs> you look a lot like that guy, though, you know? Right? <laughs> yeah, anyway, no, this is like, you know, people are going to bother you. It's like, he's like, yeah, that's not me at all. <laughs> I've actually never watched Guy Fieri. I did get into this. Again, I keep on encroaching on other comedians' bits, but I love Anthony Bourdain. I know that um, mm-hmm. um, Shane, why am I forgetting his name? Clark? He's a Clark? Gillis? Not Gillis? No, the guy who was at um, House of Comedy this recently, Shane Torres. Shane Torres. One of his most famous bits is uh, Anthony Bourdain is evil. This is before Anthony Bourdain mm-hmm. died, so we can't do it now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, you can. You, can, you can do it as much as you want now, because what's he going to find out? <laughs> this is true. <laughs> uh, you, before, um, you had to deal with a giant chef showing up. <laughs> now you don't have to fucking deal with that. <laughs> But Anthony, I loved watching Anthony Bourdain do it because Anthony Bourdain got legit blackout drunk while he was doing his show. Love it. Yeah, <laughs> love he would it. just be yeah. like, yeah, he would just like pounding Negronis while he's talking about how much he hates his job. It was well, they had that man versus food thing. Yeah, they had that man. There happened. was no signs. Yeah, it was <laughs> between commercial break two and three. He was fucking manifesto. He was writing it in Negroni on the table, and I leave nothing to the food network. Um, but I was like, they had man versus food, and I was like, it would be really fun to see if. It could be man versus bar, but I'm like, but oh, that's, oh. But I would die. <laughs> oh god! Like, like I'd have, I get two episodes in, and they'd be like, yeah, your liver is gone now. That'd be a fun oh, thing just to I try. Like, how long? Well, you got to take three months off drinking before you can film episode three. <laughs> yeah, well, we man just do, versus like, bar. Short seasons of man versus bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Want well, single episodes? I think this kind of is that. You kind of do. Yeah. yeah, you did that with Wild Turkey. A couple I did that with ago. Wild Turkey. Yeah. 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 yeah, and you know what? I, I just hadn't thought it would be a fun uh, show to. And if you're in charge of any of the food related or travel networks, uh, would be just me going to dive bar to dive bar, just the shittiest dive bar like people write in what is the worst dive bar or mm-hmm. like but good but bad yeah. in your area not one of these fake hipster ones where they're like those are animal heads on the wall yeah. <laughs> it's a nine dollar smoked tequila no, 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 not that. like one of those ones where it's like beers four dollars yeah. kind of beer beer <laughs> like, oh, there you go that's fine I feel like that's a show Doug Stanhope should do though yeah, he's got oh, to go, yeah, that'd be just a go great from show. dive bar to dive like bar. He's he's doing that now. He kind of does. Yeah. yeah he I just see. performs there by accident. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a favorite <laughs> Vancouver dive bar? Mm. That's a good question. Thank yeah. You. Well, I, I, I like the two parrots. <laughs> Yeah, oh, two yeah, parrots. Yeah, I like yeah, the two yeah, parrots yeah. because the two parrots is not trying in any way to be anything <laughs> other than open yeah. in spite of the health it's so inspectors. Oh. And, it, and it literally has, in the time I've been going there, I've, I've, I mean, I've outlived so much of the staff. They've just moved on because they have lives. They have things they want to do. And they're like, this place is an anchor on my soul. And I'm like, yep. But the wings are cheap. Yeah. And so... It's been like a tiki bar. It's been like a, it's been like a, it, for a long time, it was like, it was just a bunch of old drunks for a long time. Mm-hmm. And then a bunch of international students found it. So it was like really cool, like Spanish music for a while. Nice. And then it just kind of cycles through. Right. Um, but they they have like a beer and a shot for seven fifty. Yeah, you know, they the will you're gonna get that. For sure. Where are you going to yeah. get that? Yeah. And, and, and for a long time, closing time did not apply to me. So I was like, <laughs> where else oh, am I going to fucking cool. go? Yeah. And it feels like a bar, like when you're on the road, in small town or whatever, and they're like, this is the only bar we have. And mm-hmm. it feels like that sort of place. Oh, interesting. No yeah. pretense. You can go yeah. there at like 11 o'clock on a Saturday night, downtown Vancouver. Everywhere else is fucking ape shit, and mm-hmm. it's, here it's just five drunks huh. and the lonely fly flying around, <laughs> and then it, just a bartender just staring into the middle distance, just <laughs> wondering how they ended up there. And I'm like, this is home. Yeah, this is where I want to be. Yeah. Each side of the bar is completely different, too. <clears throat> mm-hmm. It's always like the one with the screen has always got a different yeah, energy than the other nuts. side. You don't know that. <laughs> That's that, I, that. Yeah, that's a. I don't know what the fucking happens over there. There's UFC. There's people screaming. People eating nachos off naked people on my side, where I am Not by the sushi window. Nachos. That's where, where, where the tables. Yeah. yeah, nachos of people. <laughs> 
<laughs> but where, mine's like, where the tables are wobbly right. near the bathroom, yeah, yeah that's yeah. where. The, if I ever uh, was to ever have a, a significant, important business meeting in Vancouver, I would take them there and be like, <laughs> well, "See that. how you fucking handle this." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you're not in need, if you're drinking a vodka soda, you get the fuck out. All right? <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those ones where when you pick the beer up, it's like. <laughs> oh, yeah. it's stuck to the table. <laughs> right. It's because the tables are wobbly. So yeah, I like yeah. that. What and about you? Never been been actually, down. well, the two things that pop my head. My favorite actually dive bar, and I'm I'm Captain Faux Dive. Like I'm a soft as baby shit. Um, <laughs> Captain Faux Dive. So I'm, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> hang on a second. Okay, sorry. Captain Faux Dive <laughs> sounds like a character from one of those inspirational novels about a deep sea welder who just wanted to be the, the first Filipino guy to weld or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> First Vietnamese guy to will, Captain Fodai. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's a great Captain Fodai. Write that down. Fodai. It is Fodai. Partially, I guess it's partially a Simpsons joke, but uh, uh, the captain I added myself. Fo- captain Fodai, yeah. Captain Fodai. Well, you gotta, it used to be Lieutenant Fodai. No one any respect. You're very yeah. good at giving credit to anything you might have wanted. <laughs> That's actually from. one of my biggest fears yeah. is always ripping something off. Yeah, so it's terrible. I'm always like, because especially when, you're, when I'm not scripted, yeah. I'm always like, because it's... You, a thing you heard in a sitcom in 1993, you'll just yeah. like, yeah, and you're like, shit. Yeah. And then I feel like I have to say something because it's, it's But the I internet. think that's become such a thing. Like, I think that's the thing is, like, I, I used to get, I, I'm still worried about that. I mean, I won't even take tags. If someone gives me a yes, tag, I won't I'm take the same it. Way. And uh, which is ridiculous, I guess. But it's also like one of those things. And to bring up Stanhope again, he said he's like, you know, who doesn't care about any of that shit? Everybody. It's a comedian. <laughs> yeah. Nobody else gives a shit. And, yeah. and it's funny because like people will like. So there was a comic, a famous comic, a little while ago, did one of my. I'd done it on TV long before. So it was clearly my piece and done it in a special. And and uh, he did word for word pretty much the bit. Mm-hmm. And it, it wasn't like I don't think the person saw me. I don't think yeah. they – I don't – I think it literally was just <clears> – <throat> it just happened to happen. That's my hope. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Um, Can you say the bit? Uh, n- eh, yeah. no. It's just one of those things where just it happened. And and, and, and and it's happened a few times. It happened Because I have a terrible propensity to, to go around and I'll work a bit for two or three weeks and then I'll put it away. And the problem is I've bounced around all the stages doing that bit. And so if anyone else ends up with something that's seeped into their consciousness because yelling like shout fuck is being <laughs> screaming in the corner, <laughs> now if they do, now it looks like I, so I can't have to ditch it. So I've got right. to try to teach myself not to do that. So part of that was I, I thought, well, maybe that. But in this situation, it wasn't. But then someone sent it to me and they're like, well, this is fucking person's doing your bit. And I go, eh, I just don't yeah. fucking care. Like, yeah, I just, sure. because it's like, I, 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 I would feel bad if I, I trod on someone else's bit. Um, and then, which happens, and then I would feel bad about that because it would be, if someone turns on mine, I'm just like, well, fuck, especially if I can prove it. Well, you're like, also, you I have a pretty, out. you're pretty prolific when it comes to writing this. So yeah, much I'll just out write there. more. Yeah. I'll yeah. just write more. It just gets to the point where, I, like, if you're doing three hours of jokes in an hour long set, there's only so much you can expect. To, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't have to clutch yeah. my pearls about it. Like, I, <laughs> I talked about race. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck is Richard Pryor? <laughs> um, so I was like, yeah. So I was like, I Have don't you had know. a case where someone has stolen your bit? Uh, I think thing, I think people throw around the word theft really lightly, and it's mm-hmm. not. There's a big difference between most of the time. It's this: someone does a bit that's similar, parallel thought, something the same. Yes. Oh, yeah. we all talk about roughly the same stuff because mm-hmm. we have to because that's what's relatable to audiences. Mm-hmm. There's going to be crossover. I mean, how many fucking comedians have jokes about? Oh, so my wife uses so many lotions, or well, all the fucking. It's just hackney and hackney. Yeah. How many yeah. fucking porn is weird jokes are there? Mm-hmm. So you have to accept that. I think joke theft is very rare. I think someone actually going into a room and going, that's my joke now. Yeah. That's not that common. It's like a crazy person. It, it, it yeah. seems yeah. like a crazy yeah. person. I know there are some documented cases of people who it seems like very clearly, you know, overall in show business in general, <clears throat> your menses and stuff like that, yeah. that people look at it and go, that's clearly mm-hmm. that. Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's like, it's like you look at someone like Louis C.K., you know, um, and despite... Well, you know his troubles he's a very good comedian and mm-hmm. that stuff that he he was doing stuff that was on other people's albums years before he did it so but it's not mm-hmm. that he stole it it's just that mm-hmm. he ended up in the same place and that happens yeah. yeah but the idea of actually watching someone's bit and going that's my bit now that seems to be I think Dane Cook got a lot of heat for that and I, I don't honestly think Dane Cook actually took jokes I don't, yeah. think, I don't think so either I, th- I, I do think, think there did. are some that are guilty I think Dane yeah. Cook I think there is Kryptonesia <laughs> and I think I can see a much younger comic uh-huh. Convincing themselves. This is why I, I'm actually. Right. I actually do like Amy Schumer. I know that's the controversial thing to say. Um, Turn off the. Yeah, yeah well, that's it. Shut it down. No, I'm glad we did. Amy Schumer. Um, Schumer. Well, it took me a while because I, I all these people accusing her yeah. of theft, and I'm looking at it, and I think at worst she did something a lot of people that start out young doing, which is you hear, like you said, you hear a premise, 
And then she does the same premise. I do think a a couple times you will see comics that will maybe take a tag and convince themselves they didn't. Mm. Yeah. Like, because part of the premise does get a laugh in some cases. And if you take that part, it is... I can see talking yourself out of it being theft, but it is theft. There's simply too much stuff out there to... To, to catch it all. There's just too yeah. much because yeah. you don't know. It's impossible to know 100% that everything you do, no one's ever said before. In fact, yeah. it's insane to think that because, mm-hmm. you know, not just professional comedians, but there are, you know, tens of thousands of stand-up comedians, people who are doing it, trying and everything. There is no way to know. I had a bit that I wrote when I was doing sketch that was similar to a comedian who had been touring it, but it was before. I'd never seen them work and didn't know them. And it was a bit that I did for sketch which it was after I'd become a comic, but I was taking a two-year break, so I wasn't really doing... And it ended up on one of my specials. And then the person was very angry, thinking that I... And then I looked it up, because I was like, I didn't do that, though. Like, it Uh didn't... It was similar, but it wasn't... And then I looked it up just to see the premise. And the premise had been used... Like, similar premise. Not the same joke, but Uh the same premise had been used in multiple TV shows. And I'm like, okay. So the worst-case scenario, I'm not original which is true, but right. neither is this other person. Right, so in that yeah. situation, you look at it and you go, I feel bad about it, but mm-hmm. I, I feel bad that I wasn't that original, but this was also when I was like two, three years in. Mm-hmm. And then I look at it and I go, that sucks. Yeah. It's not something I would have liked to have done. If I could flip it and not have it happen, that's great. But by the same token, that happens. Mm-hmm. It just happens. And and it and it has happened to me. And I've, I've only very rarely do I ever say anything to comedians uh, that are doing it because I'm just like most of the time I don't give a shit yeah. but sometimes if it's and like you're a, doing it better probably it, well if it's like a real <laughs> linchpin and sometimes they get you know they take their premise and they do it better than you and and sometimes it's, or it's something I haven't worked out and I haven't bothered with but if it's a linchpin piece in something I'll be like look yeah, I don't mean to be this guy and Every single time they've been like, cool, totally cool. Yeah. I didn't even realize. And, I'm like, and the same thing that happens if, because you know, you'll work a new bit and someone will be like, that's just like this. And I'll be like, F-. I had one and I've been working for the new album and someone sent me a clip of a comic on YouTube that I didn't know of mm-hmm. who was doing something similar enough. And I was like, ah, fuck, well, that's done. And I just yeah. threw it away because I was like, eh, I don't need it. Mm-hmm. I'll just write something else. But it, it's not, I'd rather know. Yeah. Right. Then just be like, because eh, I don't, I'm not that desperate for that particular laugh. There's another one somewhere. Yeah. Dan and Cook, just work harder. There was an episode on Louis where he talked to Dan Cook and they did like mm-hmm. a fake confrontation yeah. or yeah. scripted. And then like Dan Cook at the end, he goes like, Louis, don't you think it's a little crazy that you're the only one to think that you're the only one that ever had an itchy asshole? Yeah. Yeah. And that was the joke that he yeah. thought he yeah. stole. And that kind of yeah. blew my mind. I'm like, oh yeah, it's just an itchy mm-hmm. asshole. It's but that's the thing. It's like, it's like it's going to be. I mean, the, if you really sat down once, um, I can't remember the joke that I wrote. I wrote a joke specifically because I couldn't handle... I saw three comics on the same show do the same joke wow. back to, pretty much oh, back wow. to back. Yeah. And they didn't even... They weren't even aware of <laughs> what each other were doing. And I was like, I just literally... What was the joke? It ended up in... in um, oh, I'm trying to remember. It ended up in As Good As or Better Than, I think. Hmm. And Because uh, I was just like, fuck it. Like, Because I, I just took... I said, this premise is so fucking hackneyed, you can't make it funny anymore. Right. And then I, f- I found a joke and I made it funny. I was like, well, I'm fucking proved myself wrong, but I'm keeping it. <laughs> uh, but it was one of those ones where you just see the same joke again and again, and you're like, right. come on, guys. Yeah. Like, we should be paying attention to what everyone else on the show is doing. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. I get it if you show up late and someone's been talking to this loudmouth in the crowd, but you've got to figure, if there's a loudmouth in the crowd yep. that a comic's talking to before yep. you get on, mm-hmm. that everyone... It's probably covered. Yeah. yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And, then, and then try to deal with it. So it's like... You know, be as original as you can. Just try. You, you know in your heart what you are. You know mm-hmm. if you're stealing. And I've never, I don't think I've ever met a thief. No. I don't think I have. Maybe I have, but I don't mm-hmm. think I have. And I've yeah. been around a long fucking time. Yeah. So. Let's get to know. I yeah. have, thieves are gone. I have gotten a lot of, especially when I was emceeing open mics, and you're there all night long, mm-hmm. obviously. Um, I did get a lot of, I would do, you try and do something interstitial in between each one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just to keep the evening going, get a laugh. And it's also just practice of writing on your feet. Yeah. And I had several times people saying, I like that line about me. Can I use it? And the first couple times I said, oh, sure. But after a while, I'm like, no, because like, I might need to use it in another context. It's yeah. kind of like. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And that's the thing is like, it's like, also, I never understood comedians who are just like, they'll sit down with a group. Like I, I, people are sometimes they'll be like, oh, let's join my writer's group. I'm like, no. No, yeah, I know. I'm <laughs> the same <laughs> way it works. Yeah. Because first of all, I write on stage. So we're, we're not all going to fit up there. And second yeah. of all, no, because I don't want to know. I, if I didn't think of it, then mm-hmm. I don't want to say it. Like, or if I didn't get there myself, I don't want to say it. That's one of the reasons I don't want to, like, I've only done a show drunk once. Like, actually drunk once Uh or twice, maybe twice. And I've only (laughs) done it because I was like, I don't, I don't want to find out I'm funny or fucked. I don't want to find, I don't want to touch drugs. I'm not that guy because I'm just like, 
if I find out that if I do a fucking hmm. bump of coke, I'm the funniest guy in the world, then oh, I will yeah. do that then. Mm-hmm. And then that's not the way I'm going to do it. And it's not sustainable. sustainable. It's not real. It's steroids. I'm, I'm fucking doping. Right? Yeah. So I don't want to do it. Yeah. So. I was going to say, because I'm earlier talking about tags. I do have one. The one tag I do use is one you gave me. And I Ooh. feel shame every time I use it because it gets that's, popped. That's definitely <laughs> something I wrote. Yeah. <laughs> it makes no, you feel shame. Oh, because it's, it's one of those things. Anyway, that's what's wrong with women. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like that's Simon's joke. He, he makes me say it. <laughs> Are you allowed to say the joke or to be burned? Yeah, say the joke. I think I could say it. Well, the joke was, I mean, I, t- I mean, we're all talking about our penises on stage. Yeah, right. And fuck yeah. The joke was, I did it at a uh, at an open mic, and it was, um, uh, I, my, what was it? My penis uh, looks like I can't. My penis. What my penis looks like if it was among porn penises? Because I'm imagining my penis among porn penises, and I said it looked like. Uh, it was interviewing a bunch of NFL players. Is what the actual yeah. joke was. <laughs> yeah. And you said, "That's funny." You said it should be NBA team because of the, the yeah. yeah. Uh, and, uh, and I said, uh, "My penis looks like the, when it's surrounded by porn penises. It looks like the coach of an NBA team." And that's one of the uh, biggest yeah. pops I get. And I want to get rid of it, but then I have a tag yeah. after it, which is the only thing my penis should do in a porno is interview the other penises when they're done. <laughs> and so, yeah. like, I can't get there without that. But still, yeah. it's, it's that's why I can't imagine taking other material because I. Yeah, I want to, I want to generate laughs on my own stuff, uh, and yeah. so every time I'm, I mean it's it's been there for like four years now. It's in, yeah. I probably should stop saying the joke altogether. No, um, it's funny. but it's it is one of those things I can't imagine. I can't imagine just being a conglomerate of no other other material. No, I, I can't. Know, if you have any like tags, that. please. You know, <laughs> <it's me right laughs> away. I mean, that's the problem too. Is the, the problem being a comedian as well is that you'll see someone else's joke and you want to help because you'll yeah. be like, oh, oh. Yes. and mm-hmm. then sometimes like someone will come to me and be like, I saw this angle and I'll be like, fuck me, okay, like, and I'm just like, I can't believe like I used to have a bit and this is actually. Stanhope's featuring again in this podcast, but what it was was I had a bit and I, I was I did a spot opening for Stanhope once and um yeah can you can I, can I grab a oh yeah yeah, yeah sure sorry. <laughs> sure they're right over I think they're hiding over there they're over there <laughs> that's why we keep him around yeah, he's very nice now that he's got his beard shaved I can still hear you guys <laughs> thank you very much thank you. Uh, oh how am I gonna drink uh, that okay well did I just oh. he's a bartender oh he's a bartender so he knows what he's doing so I will tell the story while you sorry I'm, while you I'm, do the what's I'm that listening. thing with the sabering that you oh, saber a beer <laughs> <laughs> this is when you get dramatic. Yeah. Like, I had a friend yeah. who was uh, who was who uh, used to saber champagne all the time, really? and then he became an obstetrician. Fucking awkward. Oh, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime he has champagne, he comes up. <laughs> um, so I was I, I I got this opportunity. The first time I actually ever worked with Doug was I was going to this little club on the island. Um, Hecklers in Victoria, BC, and um, I had this opportunity. I was going over, and the idea was that like Doug could only do the Thursday, Friday, so I would fill in on the Saturday, which is a suicide mission because half of his fans will be too drunk to know that they, oh wow, yeah, that he's not there, and then the other half will be like, so you can't do the stuff to appease the fans because his fans, because that'll they'll everyone else will hate it, mm-hmm. and he can't do the stuff to appease everyone else because his fans will hate it. It was a suicide mission, but by the same token, it was an opportunity <laughs> to see Doug, um, so I did. And then on the way over, they tweeted that um, I was going to do a guest spot, and I was like, oh, that's fucking great, and I got there. And there was some confusion, and I was like, I don't need to do time, that's fine. And they're like, no, you can do five minutes. And I was like, that's fine. That's, I just want to share a stage, that's fine. So I went up, and I had this bit at the time about, I was like, I turned 36, and I was like, um, uh, it's about something about like my cold, dead eyes. Like I, I, I actually ended up doing it on one for the money. It was like, um, uh, you know how I know I'm all, I've got my, my eyes are like the circles of an oak tree. Like, they basically, it's like that. Like, they just had these dead eyes. And, oh, thank you. Look oh, at that. He gave it to go. me first. Wow. Nice. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Super true bartender. You know what would have been funny if when Mike brought the beer over, he'd just come and sat with us and be like, by the way. Fuck, I missed it. Yeah. Damn. Mm, this is the well callback. Well, that's yeah. why you're that really cool. um, And so I did that bit, and... Um, and I came off stage and I sat at the back of the room. And uh, then it was uh, the MC uh, went up again. And then the middle act went up into 30. And then Doug came out. The first thing Doug said, he was like, hey, Simon, you know how you know you're old? You, they only advertise from 18 to 35-year-olds. You're so old, your fucking money doesn't even matter. And I just <laughs> put my head on the table and I was like, God damn it. <laughs> he just outdid my bit in one second. I've had that, I had that bit for like a year at that time. Uh, and yeah. I thought I'd found the angles. And it was a great bit. It was working. And then this motherfucker just rolls in and judo <laughs> chops me. And then I was like, and then at that point I was like, oh man, like, 
I know I probably could have been like, hey, Doug, do you mind if I do that? But I would never do that because I was like, no, that's his brain. He's a genius. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to take credit for oh, a no, genius. Yeah. Right. I'm a journeyman. That's fine. And I don't mm -hmm. mind it. And I'll get there. But if when someone comes in and does that, it does make you feel very small because <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you're like, holy shit, he's good. <laughs> do, do you think Doug Stanhope's taking tags? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. That's... I think it'd be really hard to write um, <laughs> like what Doug does. Yeah. Right. I don't know how you would do it. I tried my second time doing stand up. Um, because I was a massive fan of Doug Stanhope going in. Yeah. And I tried to go as dirty as Stanhope with none of the experience of him. <laughs> <laughs> and I went up. You are not alone. Oh, so God. many have oh, tried. Oh, God. <laughs> and I literally, it is the only time, I've had some horrible, I mean, everyone's had horrible times on stage. Only time I literally I've, no, I've ran. Done, I, talking about. Never had I ran time. from the stage. I <laughs> you ran? ran? I ran from the stage. That's a and great I, way to leave your set, though. Even if you've done well. <laughs> just do it as a whole. Just be like, all right, well, you know yeah. what? And that's what Mike, just drop it, Mike, and just run. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, can you imagine doing oh. a late night set, sorry, and you're on, like, Conan or some shit, and you're like, <laughs> you're like the late show, and it's like, hey, everyone, anyway, so, uh, so that's why I don't go swimming. Ah! <laughs> 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 run! I was like, oh, that's Jakey Runs. <laughs> I would watch. The, I would find you immediately online. Oh, like, does he do that every show? <laughs> every fucking show. Like you just from the run. first show. It's been seven years yeah. straight. Every, from God, open right on. It's like I gotta do just, it now. Just, just hairpins and, and <laughs> dust like a Warner Brothers cartoon. You <laughs> <laughs> gone, dude. Mm. Fucking hell. Bert oh, Kreischer God. takes his shirt off. You sprint off stage. Yeah, you sprint like, off stage. Yeah, I love yeah. it. That's cool. <laughs> so you actually just fucking bailed. Oh, eh? I did. It was. Um, I did stay to the end. This is actually one thing I I did that I was I was proud of. I didn't know we were allowed to leave shows um, when I started stand up. So like all the open mics I went to, I would stay to the end of every open mic I went uh, to. You poor motherfucker. And, um, I did do that when I started though. To yeah. be fair, yeah, yeah. I yeah. just felt like I felt like it was like one of those ones where you see the guy who's like learning to arm wrestle and he just he can't do it anymore, but he's just <laughs> fucking trying. And you're like, I, that guy's an idiot or a champion, and I don't yeah. know which. And I would do that too. Like two, fucking twenty five act in. Oh yeah. It just to, also to learn what not to do to you was, know actually, when you're young mm -hmm. comedically do you feel yeah, like you've been influenced by any particular comic like is there any any style that like because i know a lot of comics when they start out and then and it happens to everybody i think is you kind of partially adopt that which you admire mm -hmm. that's why i tried not to watch any stand-up comedy for the first few years that i did stand-up until i could figure out who i was really interesting yeah okay and even then I ended up, like, because of my energy and stuff, leaning into that Robin Williams thing, even though I didn't mean to. It was just right. kind of the way my energy was. And because I'm an impressionist and my uh -huh. voice moved around and was two characters, I did get a bit of that. Right. But I find that, like, and now I'm, sometimes I've found I've, like, um, you know, it's very flattering, but I've been given this sort of Carlin and Hicks stuff nowadays, uh -huh. mostly because of the yelling. And I get Kinnison, too, which, if you actually look at it material-wise, I'm nothing like Kinnison. No, I wouldn't say that. Completely different. But in, in terms of delivery, I can see uh -huh. why. So people want to, but in terms of how you actually feel like you are, uh -huh. like you when you started, do you feel like you lent into something? Well, I know that I had, if there was any comics that, like, I don't want to say got me into wanting to do comedy when I started thinking I wanted to do it I, there was a, I saw a documentary uh, about the comedians of comedy which Patton Oswald yeah yeah a tour yeah. he did and that yeah. was how I literally that's how I discovered all those people it was Patton Oswald I knew him sort yeah. of before didn't know Maria Bamford at all it's genius and that was how I discovered her which is yeah revelation and um Brian was saying was still adore a lovely uh, dude and there were also people that dropped in like uh, Zach Galifianakis was part of that for a while per Live at the Purple Onions I think it's pronounced specials. Zach Gaspar Fanaski fair enough actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty Benedict much. Cumberbatch is how it's actually <laughs> <laughs> um, Can you really trust your mind? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but like I that was kind of like I looked at that. It was very much a behind the scenes type thing, and that was mm -hmm. like that's what I want to be a part of. And I think yeah. like, Patton Oswalt is one I usually he's the guy I go back to the most. I don't know if, if I'm similar to him, but his is the humor. Yeah. Like he probably has the most bits I wish I wrote. I don't like his comedy, but I love Ratatouille. Anyway, <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> just kidding. Like yeah. Can you imagine that? I was like, I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of the stand up, but <laughs> the rat stuff. <laughs> if he just did the rat stuff on stage, <laughs> stuck to that. Yeah. Could he just <laughs> just came on, on, on a on a on a rolling flat, and it's just he's pulling hair, and he's just yelling <laughs> rat stuff. No, I think I think for me, Werewolves and Lollipops was one of the first. Oh, yes. Albums yeah. I actually listen to, mm -hmm. and um, you know that that album is just like there's stuff in that that you're just like, oh yeah, no, that's a fucking, oh, that's brilliant. Deathbed, that's the bed that eats people. Yeah, my favorite bed. Of all time. Yeah. Physics for poets. Mm. I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, you know what? It's it, we're past time, but let's do it. Let's. Uh, oh. You ready to? Uh, you ready to? Uh, let's, let's get, get random. Random. random with other people. 
as opposed to <laughs> random, random, let's go random. <laughs> okay. Am I, I knocked my mic weirdly. Is this okay? Is you're good. Just okay. talk okay. into pull a bit closer random. to you. And you're good. Pull a bit closer to me. Oh, there, okay. we there, there we go. There we go. This feels so self yeah, so feels like, I feel like weird. exactly. I keep, Ooh, that's, sorry. That's perfect. I know we're getting random, but. This is the most natural way to sit, by the way. Yeah. This is how all airplane seats. That's why I have dinner. This is how all restaurant booths should be from now on. Just V's or triangles? Just V's and triangles. Could fit way more people in here. We have a party of 13. <laughs> no, we don't. No, we don't. Uh, sorry, you were saying? I was going to tell a story about quickly. Because um, I remember, I feel so much like... Tell it slowly, no rush. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. You guys have things to do. It's all good. No, we don't. Um, <laughs> we literally have no way out of here. When I was small, as a child... Um, As opposed to like last week. <laughs> yeah. Things have changed. When I found that pill in the bathroom and yeah. ate it, and I was tiny for 13 yeah. days. These used to be pants, now they're shorts. Um, <laughs> when, I, when I was small, because of the curse, <laughs> yeah. there was a uh, We Are the World came out when I was a little kid. And, um, which was the all the rock stars singing to try and beat Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Canada did a version called Tears Are Not Enough. Oh. They didn't have a lot of Canadian pop stars, obviously. This <laughs> is <Just> Kim Mitchell. <laughs> Pretty much. It was like, well, it was like your, your Anne Murray's, your Corey Hart's, yeah. what have you. Not and, my Anne Murray's, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> and I didn't know who Paul Schaefer was. I didn't watch oh, David Letterman. Yeah. And he's in that, but he's like this ethereal thing. Like he just kind of appears like, <laughs> tears and not enough. Yeah. And my father looks exactly like... <laughs> he's got a kazoo and a triangle. Like, fucking calm down, Paul. <laughs> Uh, your father looks just like Paul Schaefer. And so I thought it was my dad. I thought my dad you was thought your dad. Or not. <laughs> it's like when kids think their dad is Santa Claus, I thought my dad was a Canadian pop star at the oh, time. Oh, that's which is, which is Canadian. It's, it's actually not that, he was not that far away. Can you send me a picture and then maybe I'll post the side by I side totally or will. something? I totally Sweet. will. Yeah. That's awesome. I remember they did like a, like a, there was a Canadian version of Cribs. And, <laughs> no. they, um, and they, what was that guy? Oh, um, something. It's like just Chad Kroger's the, house. No, no, it was that guy from, it was like... <laughs> Get <laughs> one song, and it was like Snow? he's a small animal. Animal. Oh, oh, oh. No, uh, um, uh, is that is that Gowan? Gowan. You're a straight, <laughs> yeah, he's a strange, yeah, strange animal. <laughs> and they, I, I, it, I and it was literally <laughs> he just had half a duplex. <laughs> You oh tried God, to sell the other Come on in. Oh, God, that's so sad. Here's my guitar collection. It's like two guitars. <laughs> this one's rented. Oh, it's like, the episode's oh, three God minutes long. damn. Yeah, it's just oh. my son's room in the den. All right, that's it. He doesn't have a window. Oh He's with his mom this that's week. The thing is like, <laughs> like, if you came to my house and did a, and did a fucking, like, a, a cribs in my house, you'd yeah. be like, be like, well, this is it. <laughs> like this room. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's yeah. over there. There's a bike. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there's a bunch of Lego. Yeah. And then Do you want to see my amenities? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the dishwasher. <laughs> and then just me pressing the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Right? I can I'm do that all day. <laughs> have an air conditioner, I don't leave. He's Slowly the cameraman is awkward. <laughs> yeah. Where are you going? Just, try no. to just bring him down to show him the storage yeah. box. I'm making grilled cheese. Come on. I got a parking spot. You want to see? <laughs> I'll pay extra. Comes with this place. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so what's oh, your fucking, what's our random? That's hilarious. Okay, sorry. <laughs> all right. This is kind of like one for a cocaine night. Uh, if you opened a business, what kind of business would it be? Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Yeah. What kind of business? Oh, God. Um, a god business? A god business. <laughs> They're very religion. How hard can it be? That bad. would be a good business to business, start. Uh, yeah. I was actually starting to think that like Christ uh, people always compare Star Wars to Christianity, and I'm like, there yeah. is so much offshoots of offshoots of Star Wars right now. It's getting yeah. closer. It's like, what is the Catholicism yeah. of Star Wars? Star Wars Jesus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just stop. <laughs> no force. No um, force. Star Wars. Really, Star Wars Jesus. Star Wars. I mean, you could you could do some sort of. Star Wars themed church. You That's totally a good, good business. I'm sure there's got to be. Oh, I'm, I'm sure that. there's Star Wars themed weddings. Star Wars themed yeah. church. Yeah, and then like help, help, <laughs> help me, Obadiah, Jebediah. You're my yeah. only help. And then out he comes with the music, like a revival. I style, feel like right? I, if I started that though, I'd eventually be killed by people within the church. I think it's it's mm. always going to go that way at some point. That's right. how you know you did it right though. Yeah, that's right? actually true. I mean, because yeah. if you're a cult leader. Mm -hmm. And you, like, as I years ago, I wrote a treatment for sitcom, which steal it and make it because I want to watch it because no one's fucking making it. Um, <laughs> 
It was a guy who gets fired from an advertising agency. And so he decides to start a cult. He lives in a townhouse row. Mm -hmm. And he decides to start, he's like his wife leaves and everything. He has no fucking job, no nothing. So he decides to start a cult. And so he starts, uh, he decides to start a souped up sex cult. And the only people who show up are two dudes who end up being his roommates. And then the three of them are in the world's smallest cult. And they go to all the cult conventions. And, mm -hmm. But five townhouses down there's a guy running an actual fucking real cult and he like <laughs> rides around on a segway and he's got like long hair he's like hi guys and he's like fuck <laughs> it's like, so it's just about it's called us like we because that's their phrase it's like us, <laughs> us, us like, like we, we. Oh, <laughs> that's what that's it great. is it was just about a guy starting a cult mm -hmm. and then because I thought what a great fucking business opportunity yeah. like you can go fund me a cult yeah you, yeah. So, you can go yeah. fund me a cult sure, we need $35,000 for robes All right. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then uh, for flavor aid no questions <laughs> Uh, <laughs> nice. I like that I got flavor aid right because yeah, a lot of people. I was going to say. There's going to be one guy who writes in and like, dear sir. Dear sir. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what business I would start if I had a, if I had the business. I think business. I would do a themed bar. I think maybe yeah. a Star Wars oh, yeah. themed bar. Just, yeah. just vague enough that where would I couldn't be good. get sued. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Like, yeah. Space, space conflict. Space conflict. The bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. The drinks are like the the winter trooper. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Obo one Kaniski. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, right. um, that's good. I always wanted to start a standing whiskey bar called Neat. Where it's just oh. like, and you Why can't. Why standing whiskey bar? Because I just think it's great to make people stand. <laughs> and then when they fall over, they like fucking weird, leave. Like liquor reference, like standing. Like it, no. the bottle has to stand. At the, no, it's just uh, a there's a room in the standing. back where you can sit down for 20 minutes. If you can get your shit together, you can come back out. But other than that, you're fucking gone. <laughs> but it costs you money yeah, to use there's the There's a seat. wheelbarrow we use to kick you out the back door. <laughs> if you end up in the wheelbarrow, nice. then fucking you know that's it. Mm. So yeah. that's that's the idea. There's standing whiskey bar, and you just just line up, and it's just a big long shotgun bar. Yeah, and that's it. There's no fucking seats. I like it. Yeah, fucking stand up and talk. No. TVs, <laughs> drink and then leave. What if I want to sit? Fuck you. What if, I, what if I'm differently able? Differently able at a different bar. <laughs> different, differently bartled. No, you can sit down if you're if you bring your own wheelchair. You can sit. Nice. Yeah. Right. Exceptions can be made. <laughs> Just like Disneyland. So generous. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Disneyland had a no wheelchairs policy for no reason. Just like Jesus Christ, guys. crazy. Just it would like have been no there long enough. Everyone was just okay with it. Like, it's Disneyland, and yeah. what they say. Yeah, Walt had a very specific <laughs> idea of what the perfect human would be like. Now, Walt, go, yeah. go over to the nose measurer and see if you can get on the matter. <laughs> Walt might have pitched it or something. Oh. Like, there were seven types of people banged. We're down to just wheelchairs now. We've advanced. I love the idea that like Walt was an anti Semite and what if he like really that really creeped into like it's it's, it's a yeah. small world, not small enough. <laughs> Like, Jesus Christ, Walt! Is there any? I've heard that a million times. Uh, well, is there any like like historical basis for him being an anti semite I don't know. I, I mean, know. I I don't know if there if was, could, but I mean, yeah. See if Walt, yeah. Walt Disney. Google Walt Disney anti semite See what happens. <laughs> yeah. There's a bunch of people dressed like Mickey. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> what are you? Oh, you're Google like kind of the era uh -huh. too. Call Most yourself. people were. <laughs> Oh, I'm just saying that they uh, they control all the money. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what is he? Walt Disney anti-Semite? All right, here we go. We'll just do a quick. Uh, there are many charges against Walt Disney, mm -hmm. as you and and if you answered every one of them, you'd have a four-hour film that was nothing but rebuting charges. Oh. oh. So the Jerusalem Post the Jerusalem says no Post. truth in claim that Walt Disney was an anti-Semite. Oh, really? Okay. Sponsored by the Disney maybe, people? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's just, maybe it's an easy, when you when you run that big, that tight a ship, yeah. it's easy to think about comparisons to other Netanyahu large, an tightly right? run. What? <laughs> Sorry. That'd be rough. You're the prime minister of Israel, and you're like, I just don't like Jews. <laughs> <laughs> this is awkward. <laughs> it was the weirdest dinner party ever. I don't ever. understand anti-Semite. I don't I, like this. I don't understand racism in general, which is good. I've actually yeah. said that before. Is like, I'm glad I don't get it. I get I'm it. I'm glad I don't <laughs> understand. No, but I'm glad. I'm glad I don't understand it though, because like I think like I get, no, I understand why people do, it, but I'm glad I don't understand that logic. Yeah. It doesn't make sense totally. to me because mm -hmm. it's not logic. But of all the people to pick on, I don't really understand why. It's like it, I'm a little bit Jewish, like mm -hmm. I'm a quarter Jewish, not enough that you know I'd get stopped. But yeah. like you know, it's what I mean? weird that some I I know some people uh, that it's almost like anti-Semitism is, is separate from Judaism, yeah. so from racism, I should say. Like it's a whole separate type of hate. It's very strange. Yeah, it's it's, very its, own, it's its own weird sort of like it's like just yeah. the scapegoating thing. Yeah, and I mean I can understand why you would have a problem with the policies of Israel, the country, mm -hmm. and and the government. That's a different thing. Yeah. That's not that's, that's not that's that's having a problem with the policies of a as a government. Mm -hmm. It would be like saying. 
if the American government does something, you blame every American citizen. We can't do that. That's not right. true. Yeah. But you. But the idea that like you. You would just specifically. I don't just. I just don't get it. I think that's good. I that I don't. Yeah, get Yeah. Well, I mean. Yeah. It's, it's easier because if you think yeah, how insane it is, like I like birds, but I don't like robins. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> They're out there flapping around. What about other birds? Other birds <laughs> flap, and but they don't flap as annoyingly. <laughs> yeah. It's like fucking bird racism. Yeah. I can think of like like I mean people's people's dads that were racist against, and it's always someone always had an excuse like, oh, a Korean grocer was really mean to him. It's like that's not actually an that's excuse. That's not an excuse. Yeah, that's your, <laughs> that's and everyone's like, oh, okay, I get it. If you're like, I yeah. hate Carl. Why? He was fucking mean to me in his grocery store. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. what race is it? Doesn't matter. He's a yeah. fucking prick. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's Carl. Yeah. But that's the thing is like, is like when you bring it down. So if someone's a piece of shit to you, they're a piece of shit to you, and that's mm -hmm. they did something wrong. But if you hate them based on their race, now you're wrong. Yeah. yeah. So and you don't have the high ground because if someone like someone fucks your wife, you'd be like, yeah, you fucked my wife, and he'd be like, yeah, you'd be like, you fucking blank, and be like, well, now that's <laughs> that's your fault. Yeah. Now you're the asshole. The guy's now in the he has, just ruined it. He has a legitimate reason to be mad. <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> anyway, that's my business. Okay. <laughs> okay. We solved racism. I can't believe we, we did that on the racism. first. Thank God white guys dealt with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's all it needed. Three white guys to sit around and figure out how to fix racism because <laughs> tears Actually, are not enough. Okay. White people really could solve racism. We're like, well, at least our version of it is like, just stop being racist. Okay, well, that's it. Problem solved. Yeah. That's actually, no, we could just. Every yeah. racial yeah. group could stop racism if they just decided to stop yeah. being yeah. racist. Every it racism. really is easy to fix. Yeah. But then, you know, it's a lot of work. Bella, paperwork, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Fucking what a weird fucking podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I like so that. Yeah, We're yeah, making sure progress. progress. Yeah, right. We've solved a lot of problems. We're doing a good work. Uh, what's the worst gift you've ever been given and how did you react? Oh, Jesus. Um, oh, wow. I Remember when I gave you that tag? Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should have never admitted it. Yeah, no. Okay. No. Um, what's the worst? Oh, God. I can't even think of that. What's the worst? Yeah, it feels like you got to dig it's in the hard, memory. Right? Yeah. I don't even remember the presents I get. Because we're both like we're both in our forties, so yeah. that's a lot of gifts. That's a lot of Christmases I got to look. Seven back. or eight <laughs> gifts. Yeah, you know. Yeah, we can pass. We pass. No, 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 no. This is no, 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 no. I'm trying to think. It's just gonna be a sound clip. I don't want to be like it was an album I didn't like. I want to think of something that maybe I wanted, and then it ruined my life in some way. Or was there a Christmas like your mom got you a present and it like devastated? Like I was always glad for everything I got because we were poor, so it was like. I really just have that. Man. I really am a very. I'm a softie. I'm very emotional, and so yeah. for me, it really does matter if someone, if someone, did, if someone even just said happy birthday or got, or got you a car. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah. It's just the thought mm -hmm. that someone cares. For sure. Um, the idea of getting a gift that's like not. It's sufficient. tough not to. I'm, I'm always. That, yeah. I always feel remotely grateful. I'm. Mean, yeah. yeah. Actually, but I will say. I mean, the only thing I can think of now, um, and this is it's not very entertaining. Sorry, I was working at a restaurant and I was someone's secret Santa, mm -hmm. and they gave me. Um, it was a t-shirt and mm -hmm. it was just a, it was a t-shirt. It was a peace sign, but it was the American flag peace sign. It's not a political reason. I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. I just knew she had gotten it for free on a vacation. Uh -huh. And I probably <laughs> just grabbed it that morning and given it to me. I'm like, thank you. I mean, because I had actually see thought. That, yeah. See, I understand that. Like if someone's clearly not thought, yeah. like I mm -hmm. guess, like, like, oh, they gave you scratching wins. Yeah, but you love scratching wins. Like that's your favorite yeah, right. thing. Well, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Or if they bought you a car and you're like, well, I hate cars. Like, I'm gonna fucking, like <laughs> I you know, know I hate cars. I'm yeah. fucking against cars. Mm -hmm. It's like, so it's like, I guess it's, it really comes down to like, but it really is just the thought. I mean, yeah. I really mm -hmm. don't, I've not, I don't think I've ever been given a gift I didn't, yeah. I didn't yeah, like. I, I mean, because it's like, I've given gifts I I felt like weren't good enough for right. the person. Like I've tried and I failed. Yeah. So what's the worst gift you've given then? Maybe oh, that's really that. hard because yeah. like you know you it's, it's also worse at that moment and then in retrospect I'm not bad. But at that moment you're like I thought I got this right and I didn't get this <laughs> right and it was like fuck. <laughs> But then you also like think about it and you go, yeah, but but you look at all the effort you put into it and you go, well, if the person that I gave this gift to, you know, can see that, they can see it's because it's not the object, right? It's never the object. It's the thing behind the object, mm -hmm. right? It's the yeah. emotion because the, the objects come and go. I mean, you know, it's like it doesn't really matter. Things are not really important, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's why I don't pay my visa bill. Um, <laughs> I just try to philosoph philosophically argue with a collection agent. <laughs> Things don't matter, man. Money is a construct. The phone is actually open to Van City right now. Yeah. Like, 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 what you guys don't understand is sense. I get paid in something worth more. I get paid in exposure. 
and it's worth more than <laughs> oh, I'll tell awesome. I'll tell people <laughs> about credit cards. I'll tell them. I see dozens of people a week. I'll go out there and be oh like, "Have you guys God. heard about Visa?" And they'll be like, "What? It's going to be worth a fortune to you." Pay your credit card bill with exposure. That's yeah. what you're saying. <laughs> just fax them a picture of me, like just, just like no, look, you recognize me. Right? I told Jacob about it. Jacob. Yeah. <laughs> and we did podcast. Eleven people listened. It was great. <laughs> Uh, we got time for another random. All right. Uh, <laughs> what will phones be like in ten years? Hell, fuck. Um, in your head. Yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Well, they've head. tried to put it in so many other locations though, and it has not yeah. worked. Yeah. What like, other locations? To, sorry. <laughs> um, well, they tried the Google Glasses thing. They thought that was gonna be a thing. Did That's not true. work. Didn't work. Um, yeah. I guess people do have it on their watch, but it's really yeah. just. It's still the phone is still the moon or right. the, the Earth. The watch is like the satellite. I think. I think we like the phone. I think we're going to have different versions of it yeah. that connect. It's going to keep on connecting to think, more and more stuff. I think they get smaller again. Yeah, well, actually, that does make sense. Because the yeah. thing is, is like I think what the thing is, the reason they don't work on the, the wrist and stuff is because people aren't using them to talk. Mm -hmm. They're using them to text and go online yeah. and everything. I mean, that's the thing. Is like I use my phone the majority of the time to answer emails mm -hmm. and fucking, you know, like... I'll, I'll go online and I'll look stuff up and directions and stuff, which doesn't really work if it's mm -hmm. in glasses or if it's... You yeah. can't look <laughs> playing my game. <laughs> you know, like, so I think it's like... I think what's going to happen is phones are going to be really small and they're going to flip open. Mm -hmm. Like, because you got that bendable screen. And that's what I'm saying. Papers, more of those yeah, now, that's what's going to happen. So it's yeah. coming full circle. We're going yeah, we're getting flip phones, phones again. <laughs> Eventually, what will happen is the phone will come attached to a house. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll just go over oh, the wall. <laughs> so you'll just feel like, this is so much. I don't have to hold it. I don't get technic. I'm looking up, right? Like, I can move it up and down the wall. Mm -hmm. You know what would be great? If there was a cord attaching it to the wall so I didn't lose it, <laughs> just yeah. walk around the house with your iPhone. <laughs> We're Put it down, <laughs> fall the cord. It's right there. <laughs> there you go. I cord. The, the, nice. the iPhone oh. you can't lose. I wall go. to I cord. <laughs> we invented I wall. And now we've invented I cord. <laughs> just a, it's just a springy cord. It's just some fucking oh, Tim Cook so. the headset on. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Oh. Mm. Any more? Are you texting? Oh, no, no, I'm just for some of these are repeats. So I okay, yeah, you gotta flip. By. That's sad that there's repeats. We haven't done that many podcasts. <laughs> And it's pretty bad for a conversation. That's really generator. bad. For yeah. conversation but it's just generator. like there's like eleven things on there. Twelve. Like we things? never expected to go here more than seven times. What is going well, on? We got another like, one. Uh, if you had in, if the last one was a mascot, and we've mm -hmm. asked you the mascot one before, what would your mascot be? If Have we? Sure asked that. Yeah, because I said to me, Tasmanian Devil for you. Oh yeah, right, 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 right. So this one would be if you had intro music, what would your song be and why? Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Oh, like God. if you had a wrestling song, what would it be? Ooh. Oh. Oh. Well, like I mean, entrance song. Or what my entrance song be for? Well, not. I would probably not be a good wrestler, but my entrance song in general. I'm knows? not arguing with that too. I was just so waiting. No, no, like, no, no, no. Come on, Jake. I can tell you're working <laughs> out. There's a, lot of th there's a lot of things um, you're great at. That's not going to no, be one of them. I appreciate I can't see you doing a camel clutch. No. He's flexing as he's saying it. No, well, I don't think I'd be a really good wrestler. I actually, this is a hundred percent true because I was I was exercising for a while and I was told someone I was really proud. And this has happened twice. This has happened twice. At both times, the person was completely serious when they said this. Oh, no. This has happened twice. They said, flex? With a bare arm, I flexed? And then they said, no, really, flex. <laughs> That's happened to me twice. Um, I, I will randomly let anybody punch me in the abs. Nice. They're really? disturbingly strong. Really? <laughs> really? Well, yeah, because okay. it carries around a massive amount of human. <laughs> yeah. That's why my legs are fucking he huge. You can also do the splits. Yeah. I believe that. that. That's yeah. weird. Yeah. Flexible. I People always look at me as like this is this anamorphous blob, which I am. <laughs> which I am. I'm on brand. But I've accidentally developed a core from years of screaming. <laughs> like, it's just well, that makes sense. Yeah. So, like, because I realized when I came back from COVID and started doing, act doing hours again, I was like, my abs fucking fucking hurt. I was like, I've accidentally been exercising. I didn't mean to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been pouring fucking food on it. So I, just, <laughs> yeah. well, I actually got really, because I was working uh, when everything shut down, I had to work at Amazon in the warehouse for a while. And literally 10 hours a day of being a picker, yeah. grabbing stuff, I yeah. got freaking like, it was yeah. the strongest. I've also yeah. injured my, I have to get surgery on my hand because what yeah, I did yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, are you serious? Thanks, oh, yeah. From Amazon? From Amazon, yeah. Oh, sorry. What? Amazon and I worked in a chocolate factory. That's true. I had to haul buckets of like oh. kilos. It was two labor jobs in a row and I was a little yeah. old to start yeah. doing labor jobs. So I have, a, I have a node on my thumb I have to remove. On August 12th, I'm getting Deal my Deal with your oh, nodes. Yeah. Did you get workers comp or anything for that? Uh, no, I, I, I probably should have applied or something. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. When I was working on the, uh, restoring that restaurant, Resto modding that trailer, I was yeah. working like hours and hours and hours every day, and it was like using sanders and hammers and stuff, and like, and it got to the point where my hands, I just didn't, they didn't work. And mm -hmm. I thought, yeah. I was like, that's that then. Mm -hmm. And then they started working again. I was like, <laughs> cool, because I need them. Yeah. There's yeah, a lot yeah, of me going. <laughs> <laughs> just like trying to hold the mic. Oh. 
How's everyone? Do- how's everyone doing tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Simon's got a new style. He's got a new way. It's like a- I once went on a workers' comp. I was I used to work at Brandy's, and one day I cleaned the. That's pole. a strip club, by the it's way. Strip club. I worked at a strip club as a busboy, and I'd have to clean the pole in between performances. Jesus Christ! Wow. And I loved it actually. The, I want to make job. sure the, I want to make sure the pole was clean. The women didn't uh, t- t- trip. But I was cleaning it, and I jumped up to the top, and I landed on my ankle wrong, and completely fell in the middle of the stage. And like all these men with boners had to come and like hold me. I threw a dollar at him. Yeah, Yeah, that's not fun. You know, I've never been to a strip club when it's actually being a strip club. I've never, oh, really? seen a, I've never seen a stripper in my life. It's I've, been, so I've performed at strip yeah. clubs, but I've never... It's more fun to work at one than go I don't one. really care. I don't like... I've gone twice. I did not like the I experience. I don't care yeah. at all. Yeah. I don't the care. the women were... Like, the busboys were the drug addicts. We were the drug addicts. All the dancers were, like, sober, professional. It's not that, though. It's just, it's just... It's, it's not for me. Yeah. It's just like yeah, it's just, it's honestly just not a thing. It's not like and I mean I'm a feminist, but it's not like I'm a weird like no, do what you want. It's your mm-hmm. life. You fucking uh, you want to even make a better living than me, do it. I just don't care. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like I've been to strip clubs to perform because to I've been you know, yeah, to dance. Yeah, yeah. And, um, that's how you learn to do clothes and then I just <laughs> then I just run off the stage. <laughs> And then it, the whole time I'm like, Dad! And then I just run. Uh, I actually tweeted that on Father's Day. And Father's Day is weird for everybody uh. at the strip club. <laughs> so it's just like, this is the only time I get to see her because of the custody uh. thing. Oh, um, wow. That's okay. <laughs> How long have we got left here, man? We're good. We're oh, good. We're okay. right. I think we have to start thinking about wrapping up. This is That's a lot good. of fun. Will you that come back? We'll come back and do it again. Come back. This is a blast, yeah. Uh, it, what would you like people to go and see and do? Oh, shoot. Where can they find you? I don't even know my Twitter handle or my Instagram anymore. Cool. Cool. That's um, what you want in this business. Oh, yeah. For, he's a comedian. Doesn't know how you can find him. <laughs> just get out there. And He'll find hope. you. Yeah. Okay. My name is Jake Spencer. If you Google it, I think there's things out there. 77 Jakes. That's my Instagram. There we that go. I know. 77 Jakes. 77 Jakes. 77 Jakes. Why 77? Uh, because I was born in 1977. Same oh. with me. It's that. Okay. Yeah. We're the that. same age. We're almost the same age. Yeah, you're what, a little younger. I'm February 18th, 77. Okay, that's, I know 18th isn't a month, yeah, but September, I want to add yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, you look great. Yeah. yeah, you look great. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I will say it was. I, I know you guys need to move on to another podcast. No, I don't give a shit. It was crazy because I, I started shaving my head because I was going bald. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And at that point, I was totally brown. Mm-hmm. And then I grew my beard out like two years later. And that yeah. was when I discovered I went gray. So in between <laughs> shaving and growing the beard, I went gray. I had gray I had gray hair my whole life. Like really? basically since I was like 17 years old, Jesus. I had like gray hair. And then now it's starting to finally start to actually I was say, come you in. You don't have a lot of gray. No, it's starting to come yeah. in now. It's starting to look mm-hmm. like... But it's weird because I have this child's face. <laughs> so if you see me without a beard, I just look like a, I just look like a guy who just, like, just sits at a bus stop all day and just watches think. buses. So I'm sure I've seen you I don't think I've ever seen you without a beard. It's very rare that okay. I have no beard. And then yeah. uh, people always make fun comments like, that's what your face looks like? Oh. I'm like, yeah, I hate- that's what it looks like. How many yeah. chins you got? Three. <laughs> <laughs> I have no chin. This is why I can't believe I ever didn't have a beard. Like, I shave off my beard. My chin is like up here. I'm like, I have no, I have no face. I'm it's all, so strange. I'm, all, I'm, all, I'm weirdly just, I'm a fucking strange yeah. shaped person. Mm-hmm. We're saying this, I bought a suit for the first time today. Oh, life. really? Never bought a suit before in my life. Mm-hmm. I'm a 48 Oh, and 48 because of these fucking ribs. <laughs> and I bought a three piece suit. Two pieces nice. work fine. Third piece, it looks like it's trying to fucking hold. It's like someone overfilled the Hindenburg. Oh, it's like it's <laughs> just about to explode halfway over the Atlantic. Well, that's not good for anybody. So, uh, anyway, there's an image for you. Um, this is, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. Thank um, you. Find, uh, find uh, Jake at uh, 77 Jake's, and um, which does also sounds like a beer. <laughs> Seventy-seven Jakes, seventy-seven Jakes, the Baba Yaga, and yeah. what was the other one? Uh, but the other one, the other beer was Baba Yaga, seventy-seven Jakes. Oh, and the um, hipster something. Uh, doctor, was it? Uh, I'm Fodive. I'm I'm Doctor Fodive. Doctor Fodive. Captain Fodive. Captain Fodive. Captain Fodive. Yeah. Um, find Mikey. Where can people find you when you're not uh, here? Instagram. Mike Greenwood Fun. That's and they can it. follow the podcast on Instagram. Yes. Yeah. Uh, WWSK yeah. Podcast. You can send us a letter at www.skpodcast at gmail.com. Please like and subscribe. And um, yeah, you can find me online. You know where I'm. Fucking Google me. But it, there's a, a special I did. It's the special. end of this video. You can fucking find it and then join the Patreon. If you join the Patreon, you get an extra episode every month. And uh, the line, we just gave out um, some uh, coupon code for the upcoming Dark Show, too. So that's Ooh. existing as well. So uh, you can go on there you can get things okay. more things will happen the more of you there are um, but to both of you who are watching thank you so much <laughs> and uh, thank you everybody thank you Jake Spencer thank you Jake Spencer thank you that's what's wrong this week